Welcome to Finance with Avery. In this video, I want to give an overview and some details of the new Apple High Yield Savings Account that was recently announced. I'm going to get into details about the info about the new savings account, the features, some of the requirements, and some of the fine print that you kind of have to dig for a little bit to find out about that wasn't, you know, in all the headlines and everything like that. You know, overall, this seems like a really neat, great savings account for several people, especially if you're in the Apple ecosystem. You know, you like Apple Wallet, that feature, you have the Apple Card, which we'll get into that because that's one of the requirements. And let's get into the rest of the video here all right about the apple savings account now apple is not a bank now despite having a savings account apple is still not a bank and they're still not a financial institution they state that in the fine print on their website that apple is not in a financial institution although some people can maybe argue that a little bit with how involved they are in finances you know with apple wallet and now the savings account and the apple card however this savings account like their credit card the apple card is issued and provided by goldman sachs now goldman sachs is definitely a bank they are the fifth largest bank in the united states States based on total assets which are around 1.5 1.4 trillion dollars yeah you got that right not in the billions definitely not in the millions trillion so yeah Goldman Sachs is definitely one of the biggest banks in the United States you know number one is JP Morgan I think they have around three trillion in assets or something like that three point something trillion so Apple definitely has a major partner in the financial institution in banking space with their depth into this finance world that they've become in with Apple wallet and Apple card and now the savings account so yeah this savings account is issued and provided by Goldman Sachs and that's how you get the FDIC insurance because this savings account is FDIC insured Now, FDIC stands for the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation which is an independent agency created by Congress to protect deposits from customers in banks and financial institutions so customers that have funds in banks that are FDIC insured means their deposits are typically covered up to $250,000 if the bank goes under or defaults or bankrupt or anything like that then the customer deposits are protected up to that amount and that amount actually matches the maximum balance allowed in this Apple savings account which is $250,000 so yeah that is the maximum balance allowed in the Apple savings account is $250,000 and if you somehow transfer more funds than that to your account after you have $250,000 then Apple is pretty much going to cut you a check they're going to like pretty much reject it and they'll send you a check for that amount is what they state in the fine print now that maximum balance right there amount does not include interest or cash back that you receive from the Apple card because we'll get into more about the cash back and everything but that maximum balance just includes funds deposited into your account it doesn't include interest or cash back that will be transferred possibly to your savings account if you have that set up and everything we'll get into that later now also with this savings account there are no monthly maintenance fees and there is no minimum balance requirements so that's going to be coming along with the common features right there with online savings account Apple is doing that with this savings account and the APY which got a lot of headlines got a lot of attention is the 4.15 percent APY annual percentage yield which is definitely on the higher end the national average savings account APY is 0.35 percent so definitely paltry definitely low so that 4.15 percent APY definitely caught a lot of headlines and got a lot of attention because it is much much more than the national average now you'll see different things thrown around 11 times 12 times the national average so yeah it's very much better than the national average however when it comes to the online savings account realm it's up there with other savings accounts now there are other online savings accounts that have a higher APY some that have around 4% APY and some around 4.5 and I've even seen 5% so there are other ones that do have higher amounts but Apple is a huge major corporation so that's the thing they come with them as well they come with a brand and Goldman Sachs as well because some people you know they might feel even though if that financial institution is like FDIC and sure like, I never heard of that institution or that bank or anything and I understand that you want to be comfortable where you have your money at so some people and you know there's APY isn't the only reason to have your money in a savings account in a certain financial institution you want to have other features that you like you know the company itself you want to like them the customer service or different things that are important to you me personally I don't choose an account just based on APY yeah having an AP high APY is definitely a requirement for me with a savings account but I want some other nice features some other you know things about the company itself that I must like to have my money there with them but yeah so Apple does have that 4.15 percent APY and it is variable which means it is subject to change at any moment i mean this could change tomorrow next week next month and they will notify you if the apy changes whether it decreases or increases now the realm we're in now lately savings account rates has been increasing steadily for the past year or so because of the federal funds rate has been increasing and now i won't get jump into that into this video because it's not about that but 
So the trend has been only up with the savings account. But however, federal funds rate, things may be slowing down with that. They may, I don't, I'm not going to say they're going to go down anytime soon. You know, I'm not going to jump into that in this video. I could go on and on about that, but I won't do that. But just let you know that that 4.15% APY is variable, not fixed, subject to change. And speaking of the APY and the interest, the interest on this savings account is compounded daily and credited to your account monthly. So in the fine print about their interest, they state that they pay interest in whole cents. Fractional interest is rounded to the nearest whole cent each month for credit to your account. Any rounded interest yet unearned in a previous month is deducted from interest earnings the following month. Now, more importantly right here, the interest is compounded daily and credited to your account monthly, which I stated, because the interest is calculated using the daily balance method, which means that they apply a daily periodic rate to the principal and accrued interest in your account every day. Interest is calculated every day for each calendar year. Different accounts, sometimes interest is compounded monthly and credited monthly. Sometimes interest is compounded daily and credited monthly. With the daily versus monthly compounding, that's something you may not notice that much depending on your account size. If you have a smaller account or something like that, it's not going to make that big of a difference the way the interest is compounded. However, the larger amounts you have becomes more noticeable. But it is nice to see that the interest is compounded daily and of course credited monthly because compound interest is amazing. So yeah. And the next thing I noticed on the Apple Savings account is that you can add beneficiaries by speaking with the savings account specialist. So you can add, you know, one or two multiple beneficiaries to your account by speaking to that specialist to add them on your account because some accounts with financial institutions there's nowhere to add a beneficiary and so i saw that kind of stood out a little bit so i thought i'd throw that on the list that you can add beneficiaries to your savings account with apple now let's get to some of the requirements that you must meet to have this account all right now requirements to open and maintain a savings account with apple you have to be an owner or a co-owner of an active apple card account the apple card is the card that is pretty much like a main feature of this savings account because it's very much linked with the savings account with the cash back and different things like that which we'll get in more details with the moving money around section which i'll get to next now the next requirement is that you have to add apple card to your iphone so not only do you have to have an apple card you have to add it to your iphone to the apple wallet section of your iphone iPhone, which is very easy to do very seamless I've added different cards to my Apple wallet so you have to add the Apple card to your iPhone next requirement you have to be at least 18 years or older which is pretty much a requirement for credit cards in general so that's a standard right there you have to be 18 years or older to have the Apple card so for the savings account you have to be at least 18 years or older for this savings account and you have to have a social security number or individual taxpayer identification number next requirement is that you have to be a u.s resident with a valid physical u.s united states address another requirement is that you have to set up two-factor authentication for your apple id which is just another security feature you've seen it on different websites you probably have it with other apps and everything on your phone where you know you log in not only do you just have to put in your password but you have to get like maybe a text to your phone or you use the google authentic Authenticator app or something like that where you use another layer of security you have to set that up with your Apple ID to have the savings account to maintain it here with Apple and I also saw that they state that you have to update to the latest version of iOS for the savings account so I'm guessing you know pretty much that's how they're going to deploy like different security features and different things like that with Apple wallet which they're going to want you to be more up to date you know if they found a bug or a flaw or a glitch or something especially you know with dealing with money and everything like that they're going to want you to be updated to the newest version of iOS for those security features and other features so that is a requirement I saw right there to open and maintain a savings account with Apple now let's get to how you're going to move money to and from this savings account all right now how to deposit and move money with the apple savings account now daily cash that you earn with the apple card can be automatically added to your savings account so daily cash basically is a cash back feature of the apple card it's one of their primary highlights of the apple card apple card gives you unlimited daily cash back so there's no cap on the cash back you get three percent cash back on anything you buy at apple on their website you know whether it be a mac an iphone case games from the app store music from apple music apple tv anything like that you get 3% cash back on that. And you also get 3% cash back at select retailers like Panera Bread, Uber, Walgreens, Exxon, Nike, T-Mobile, Uber Eats. You know, they have a few different retailers right there that they partner with to give you that higher cash back of 3%. And then if you're not spending anywhere of those retailers or, you know, on apple.com or anything like that, or at the Apple store to for that 3% cash back, you can get 2% cash back anytime you use Apple Pay with your Apple card at other retailers. And you can set up that cash back to be automatically added to your savings account instead of it just sitting in Apple Cash, basically. So that's what you're obviously going to want to do to obtain interest on that cash back. It pretty much could be seamless right there. You use your card to spend your money wherever 
whatever you get the cash back is moved over to your savings account pretty seamless right there you can add funds to your savings account via a linked bank account and you can add multiple linked bank accounts to your apple savings account right there so you can actually move funds to and from those accounts to your savings accounts and vice versa and it could take a few days before those funds are be able to be withdrawn from your savings account once you move them over from the linked bank account once you set that up now funds withdrawn from your apple savings to an external bank account can take one to three business days and you also you can add funds via apple cash now if you have funds in your apple cash in your apple wallet you can move those over to your savings right there and those funds are typically available instantly once you move them over to your savings so it pretty much happens seamless right there pretty instant and for the apple cash transfers they state that transfers must be at least one dollar and can be no more than ten thousand dollars and that you may transfer no more than twenty thousand dollars per rolling seven day period and they state that they may place additional limits on the amount and frequency of transfers for the security of your account. And also you can deposit certain types of checks to your Apple savings account. And for the checks, they say any accepted check must be made payable to you or to Goldman Sachs Bank USA and must be endorsed on the back with for deposit only to Goldman Sachs Bank USA and include your account number on the back. And they state that you may not deposit the following types of items, which include money orders, third party checks, starter checks, temporary checks, double endorsed checks, or checks older than six months, post dated checks, foreign checks, incomplete checks, traveler's checks, counter's checks, checks with restrictive legends, and any other items that from time to time in their sole discretion are determined to not be accepted. So those forms of checks or deposits right there cannot be accepted into your savings account. So they won't allow those types of checks or those type of deposits. And then also last one here I noted is that there is no cash access with your savings account, whether that be via banks or ATMs or other ways like that. So there's no way to deposit actual physical cash into your savings account at an ATM or a retailer. And there's no way to withdraw physical cash from a retailer or ATM or anything like that with your Apple savings account. Now, of course, all these issues right here are subject to change. They can add new features. They can take away features. They can add different kinds of access or anything like that. Now, this information is up to date as of April 2023. Just like the APY is subject to change, the different features of this account are subject to change as well. And that is it with my overview video of the Apple High Yield Savings Account. And that is it with my overview video of the Apple High Yield Savings Account. And also, I do ranking videos of the top 10 savings accounts ranked by APY annual percentage yield typically monthly so check that out right here I got a link up there on the video and down in the description so you can see where the other online savings accounts are what kind of APY they present and everything and Apple may make the list next month and that is it with the video hope you all enjoyed it take care